Hi and welcome to Making Music. Today we have some special guests from Guitar Showcase. We have Mark Zalatimo, our Pro Audio Manager, and we have Adam Wissett, our Pro Audio Specialist. And today we're going to talk about digital recording. Right. Okay, Mark, computer-based recording, okay, versus a show we did a, a couple of weeks back uh -huh. with Roland where they used an actual machine. Okay, right. that was it was different. So we're going to use we're going to talk about computer based recording today. And you have a, you brought a computer here. Yep. We and everything we need to do it. And then um, Adam, you wrote the tune that we're going to do. Yeah. And and it actually started as a country song. It did. And you've also played it as a rock song. Yeah, I play it in my band as a sort of more of a band rock song. More of a rock song. Okay. And Mark. <laughs> As a producer, you made it into more of a pop venue, right? More of a pop rock song. Okay, good, know? good. So we're gonna right. we're gonna talk about today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how an aspiring songwriter, singer songwriter, or just a songwriter, mm -hmm. can actually get his material on not just on paper, but you know onto uh, onto a, a CD. You know, and this this song, if we can if we can get in on it, it like like a lot of songs or Silicon Valley deals. What they do is they start out as just a scratch pad, really. And this, this happened to be a piece of mail that was laying around. Actually, it was from Comcast, which is kind of cool. But the name of the song is Nothing But Trouble. And you can see that where we have the words and the, the chords and some, some various things on here, that we basically start the same way we did when I was a pup. Okay, this is how it started. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about history here. With, okay. With, you know, we started with tape. Right. Okay, now when I was doing this in the old days, we, you know, we had big reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders, right. and we, we had to literally cut and splice tape. That's, that's I had to the way take it was a, done. A razor right. and cut it and put it back together with some splicing tape, right. and we made a, you know, that's how we edited it, right. actually, because it was... Those were the old days. Yeah, it was, it was linear editing, right. <laughs> because everything was on a tape, and we didn't have a lot of choices. Right. Okay. Now, now, you've got not just computer-based, but let's go forward from there a little bit. We still used tape, right? Not yeah, analog so tape, but we went to digital, like the ADATs and right. the DA88s. The evolution of recording has sort of gone from you know analog tape-based, which is for the longest time that's the way it was, and, and a lot of people argue that that still sounds the best, uh -huh. right? To a digital type of format, digital tape. And now we're doing hard disk recording. So everything can be done on a computer that most people own already in their own home, which is making this type of recording more accessible to musicians and songwriters than it ever has been in the past. Right. Because so it took some equipment. That's right. It took Serious a, a, equipment. A lot of equipment and a lot of money, right? As we know how expensive that analog gear was. Yeah, a lot of money. So and huge, too. It was it was massive. massive. Yeah, that's true too. Now, not only that, but the maintenance of that analog gear was oh yeah. pretty intensive. Head cleaning and pinch rollers. That's right. All of the rubber, you know, cleaner you had to put on it. That's I mean, right. Virtually using a, a reel to reel, actually, in while using it, you're actually getting closer to its demise. Right. You know what I mean? Just using it is closer to breaking it. Right. It's wearing it out. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, yeah, it's dying on you as, exactly. we, as we go. So I think we're lucky now to have what we have available to us as songwriters. And, you know, Adam's a great songwriter. I like, I'm a big fan of Adam's songs, uh, especially this one, which I, I really grew to love as we worked on it. Um, so, you know, we did this with gear that really didn't cost us an arm and a leg to, to, to get. And um, we can talk a little bit about um, the equipment that we used yeah, if let's talk like. about that because uh, that's important. This, first of all, this computer is just a common Dell. Anybody could have one, a Pentium right. 4, a little horsepower. This, not, is, you know. this is actually the computer that we use at work for our it audio, is. showing our audio applications at Guitar Showcase. Okay, so it's just a common computer. Anybody's laptop or regular computer will work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. a couple of the things that we are, uh, are actually using today, one of them is Reason software. I don't know if you can get a close-up shot of this box up here. So but Reason this is, is the name of this it? This is Reason 3.0. This is the latest version of the software that's available. Uh, this is a MIDI sequencing application. And most musicians, songwriters who come in and talk to us at the store, they're a little scared off by the, just the words MIDI sequencing application. It's a pretty simple application to use. The, uh, the idea behind it is that it has a huge sound set. It has orchestral sounds. It has uh, drum sounds, hundreds of different drum kits. It has uh, percussion, 
uh, it has piano, it has electric pianos, assortment of just about everything any musician could ever want to create music. Cool. So the idea with the, what we did with Adam is Adam is mainly a guitar player and singer, right? Correct, yeah. So we took Adam's guitar part and vocal part and we built some other, some other instrumentation around it to produce a song that normally Adam wouldn't have been able to produce on his own unless he had this stuff. Reason costs about $400 to buy the application. It's really mm -hmm. inexpensive. And we're combining that application with Pro Tools, which is another very popular recording medium used on computers today. And that's Pro from DigiDesign? That's from a company called DigiDesign. They're here in and they are the industry leader okay. in, in software recording. They've and they're been here in the Silicon longest. Valley, right? They yeah, are. They're, they're, based they're in local, San Francisco, local yeah. group. Right up, I think, in Burlingame, I think. Yeah. Several of our guys that, that used to work at Guitar Showcase are now at DigiDesign and uh, we, we keep in contact with right. them. Yeah, that's, that's Well, it's, it's good stuff. And, and the nice thing about Reason and Pro Tools is how well they integrate together. Okay. So the cool thing that we've done with this song is that we've recorded Adam into Pro Tools. We recorded his guitar part, we recorded his vocal part, and then with Reason, we have used a plugin that's called Rewire. And Rewire is a plugin that allows Pro Tools and Reason to synchronize together. So when you press play in one application, it pl presses play in the other one. If you press play in Reason, it plays Pro Tools and vice versa. So we're able to sequence parts in Reason, like in this track we have a, a little, little keyboard part, mm -hmm. and we have a tambourine part, and we also program some drums in Reason to go around Adam's guitar and vocals. And they all seamlessly work together, and the Rewire plugin allows Reason to stream audio into Pro Tools and you can record your analog tracks right over the top, and they, you'd never know that it was in two applications. Okay, and you're multi-tracking. So That's right, we're multi-tracking. Bass is on one, guitar is on another. Layering the tracks one on top of the other. Okay. And the equipment that we use to get the audio into the computer for, for Adam, like for his singing and for his guitar playing, is an audio interface much like this one right here. This in is fact, made by... that one? This is the same one we use. It's made by DigiDesign. Mm -hmm. This is called the 002 Rack. And this is an 8-input, eight 8-output eight audio interface for your computer that connects to your computer via FireWire cable. And uh, we just plug the mics into the back. It's got four mic preamps built into it. And away we go. We record right into the computer. And this has analog to digital converters that's that go right, right into the... It's that analog, digitize everything. That's basically. right. It digitizes okay. everything. It's basically a digitizing box is okay, what it good. is. And uh, there are many forms that, this, that these, sort, these come in. Right. Uh, DigiDesign also makes... The Mbox 2, which we have boxed back here, it's a two-channel version of this thing. Smaller version. So smaller version. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can buy these for about $1,100 roughly. Which the little guy go for? The little guys go for about $450. Okay, so it's not a lot of money. And then recently, DigiDesign also bought the company M-Audio. And so now you can use M-Audio devices with Pro Tools M-Powered, which is just another version of this. And okay. it's a little less expensive, but the same idea. So... Uh, aside from that, a microphone, which we used, some mm -hmm. studio monitors, and that's all you need to really get started. So it's not, it's not a lot. Now, now, Adam, you have a studio at home that you kind of built with some of your buddies and that you guys go in. Well, I'm actually in the studio. Uh, I'm actually a small cog of that, of that uh, studio. But, yeah, there's, uh, it's called the Compound Recordings out in Ben Lomond. So you and built your own basic yeah, recording company. Yeah. Based on this kind of stuff? Based on, there, um, there we're using the, uh, the HD version. We sell at the... At Showcase, we sell the LE version, okay. um, which the HD version sort of offers you unlimited tracks, okay. a few of the features like that. A little whereas, bigger version. Yeah, exactly. And a this little, is a little more. Yeah, this is sort of more for the home studio mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay, so what, what do you have? A bunch of microphones and, oh, and yeah, all we, the goodies you know, that you've collected over the years? The funny thing about, about studios is you never really stop collecting. You just keep finding stuff. You know, there's always more to spend your money on. Yeah. Like, we get that a lot you know, at work. Uh, People just saying, well, God, I only have this much money. Well, you know, if you're getting ready to start a studio, you better be prepared to always spend money. And <laughs> always, yeah. I mean, it's just constant. <laughs> right. Yeah. Some people call them a money pit, but you know. Yeah. I know Burt McIntyre, who, who works in our rental department and swap shop, is a gearhead. I, I've he's known probably him since spent he was a kid, and he, he's got literally hundreds of microphones, yeah. effects processors. Definitely. Two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of gear that he's collected for his studio. Exactly. Yeah. Mean, not that you have to do that, but you know, it's, it's something that, right. you know. It kind of, it, it grows on you. Yeah, you don't have to spend a lot of money to really get started. And, you know, the, the, the greatest thing for me as a songwriter, because I'm also a songwriter, uh, when I first started, when I bought my first piece of DigiDesign gear, it was the 001, the version before this. Mm -hmm. 
My songwriting got so much better in a matter of two months because I was able to just keep recording guitar parts and continue recording my vocal parts and my singing got so much better. My songwriting developed a huge amount. I mean, I, I went from zero to a hundred in two months. Right. And so the, the, I really encourage any songwriter out there to explore this a little bit because you're going to get so much better and you're going to be so much happier with your songwriting. And it's such a great way to spend extra time that you have laying down song ideas. Absolutely. Very satisfying. Okay, so is it because you can accomplish so much more in a Abs shorter period of time? Absolutely. I mean, we, th we threw this song together literally yesterday in about three, four hours. I'd have to say, yeah. Okay, cool. It would have taken yeah. you using analog gear, I mean, a lot longer. Right. You know, yeah. because we generated drum tracks, keyboard parts, tambourine parts, all within like a, a matter of 30 minutes and, the vocals. and built around his right. vocals and then played the guitar over the top. Okay. The great thing about Reason is you have so many instruments just at your disposal, right. at your disposal, without even having to have musicians to play them. You know, you just so they're included. There, there's many sounds in reason. That they're you can all use. in there. Yeah, okay. it comes with three CDs that are full of sounds, ah. and that's mainly what's on the CDs more than the, the, the more application than, itself. Right, it's right. very small. So you got a small application and lots of tools to Absolutely, use. Absolutely, okay. yeah, and it it sounds good. Well, um, now, now this this song, Adam, did you ever record this song previously to what you and Mark did? Uh, actually, no, I okay. haven't. Um, I played play it in my band. I play, play it in the live. band that I'm playing in now, and uh, it, we, it, there's a lot more changes in the band. You know, we got solos. We get, we've spiced it up a little bit in the uh -huh. band. Um, yesterday, we quite didn't have a lot of time to just spice right. it up too much. I mean, we could have gone to a lot more extent with the tools that we have. Right. Um, but you know, I like it. It's it's right. catchy the way we have it. Um, but no, I have not recorded it with my band or as a solo. Well, well tell me about your band. What, what's the name of your band? Uh, it's called Northern Rail. It's a country rock band, sort cool. of based out of Santa Cruz. Okay. And so that's uh, why it kind of started as a sort of a country song. Yeah. Well, and then you know. Mark morphed it into a pop song. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah. see, that's the, the thing I like about songwriting is you can take one song and it can, it can go many different directions. A song isn't necessarily about having to be a statement or anything like that. It can be just a moment, you know. It can just be, uh, this, is, this was yesterday with me and Mark hanging out and making right. this song. This is right. how it turned out. Now, if I right. was to take that same progression and those same words and put it with a different group of people, it'd come out completely different. Right, right. And that, to me, that's what songwriting is about. It's about communicating with other people right. on a level that we all communicate on, you absolutely. know, Absolutely, absolutely. Well, do me a favor. You brought a guitar along. Can you just, just play the tune kind of in the country genre that you wrote it in originally with your band? And then later, we're going to go to the more pop version that we did. All right. So let's, let's listen to that a little bit. Okay. Show me a woman I can trust And I'll show you a man I might be willing to get up again So far my energy's been wasted Barely it's equal to the broken you know? heart Sick of that equation well, I spent each time that I had my lord Chase this good Trying for, oh, and I can lie, let it go. Somebody once told me it takes some time. Falling in love ain't like what it used to be in old time. I'm sure, boy, someday you'll find this is right. To get one out of fun, this is wrong. That's the road I beat my head against the wall And I try and think what I've been trying for And I can lie, let it go I hit a 
against the wall And I try and think what I've been trying for Oh, and I can lie, let it go And I can lie, let it go Right. Very it. good. Nice. That's cool. So that's Thank how it you. started. That's how it started. started. And you know, it didn't vary very much from this. I was kind of looking at the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah. and that's cool. That's 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 kind of neat. Okay. I'm actually surprised I remember the words. I usually forget them. Do you? I'm pretty bad sometimes. Yeah, but you can fake it, right? <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, fake it. That's right. <laughs> I'm good at faking it. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, then now, what did you guys do? So. Uh, I had Adam actually when we decided to, to do this project. I had Adam play a couple songs of his because I wanted to use one of his songs, uh, and we found one that that we both thought would would work. This song. Yeah, I really like this one a lot. I, I I thought we could do something with it. Okay. So what we've done is uh, I'll show you some of the parts that yeah. we created. Excellent. Uh, around this. Uh, let's see here. Do we need to get in tight on this screen so we? Does it mean anything um, at this it, point? I don't think it means anything at this point. Okay. So. So you have different tracks. I'll let you hear the drum track that we've created around this. This was in reason that you right. pulled these so this drums. Is, this okay. is all in reason. Okay, so audience. that's an idea of the drum track and the way it sounds. Now, in my opinion, I think it sounds fantastic. It's a great sounding drum track. Yeah. To get that drum sound, if you were to mic up a drum set, and the amount of time involved in that. Take you, you several hours. You know, right? You, Absolutely. We've all been Take almost the an entire process. day. Yeah. You spend yeah. as much time setting up mics That's as you right. do actually. Absolutely. An entire day Performing. would be dedicated to mic and the drums. So we did this, we picked this out and programmed it within basically 20 minutes. Yep. You just picked out a bunch of preset drum patterns that fit. Excellent. So, so that's an idea of the drum pattern. Uh, and we, had, we layered some other stuff on top, like we layered this keyboard part on top, which I'll kind of play, which goes in the chorus part section of the song. And I'll let you hear the drums and the keyboard part together. So it sounds really simple and by itself, maybe even a little bit strange, right? Little, I remember when you came in the room the other day. I came in the room, <laughs> I heard down, I said, where's What's the Tinkerbell piano? piano? Yeah. <laughs> right, so, so there's that. And then, you know, I, I did some really simple stuff with this song. I didn't want to overload it with too much, too many tracks. I mean, I wanted right. to keep it simple. And the last element that we added out of reason was this uh, tambourine part. You can hear the tambourine in there, right? If you want to hear it a little louder. There's the tambourine part. You can hear them. So all of those elements were really simple to, to add in, but it, it adds like the finishing touches on a song that you normally wouldn't have available to you as a guitar player, songwriter, singer. Right. So here's the whole track together, and I'll kind of let you hear. And we had a bass line too? No bass line. We did line. not no. throw a bass line in We didn't this. throw one in? We no. I wanted to, to, but you know. We producer. didn't have time. Yeah. We, He's a producer. Yeah. yeah so we, we ran we, out of time. and we got, I think we got, it definitely works the way it is. And then we added some background vocals to this track as well. But you, you, before you finish your product, you would probably add a bass line. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure we yeah. would. Okay. So here's the, here's the entire track uh, with all the parts together, Adam's guitar playing and singing, uh, along with the keyboard part, the tambourine part, background vocals, right. and the drums, of course. Yeah. And here we go. Let's hear it. I'll my head against the wall. 
Okay, and there you have it. Cool. So you notice it's a lot faster. Yeah, yeah there's a, a lot faster. of little changes. Didn't change it that bad. No. Not too no, bad. That's, that's a cool song. So that's your very very latest release that ain't released yet. That's right. right. Uh, well, I, that's actually, that song's probably a good two years old now. Really? I yeah, told Adam cool. that if we can market this thing, we could make him a pop star. I, okay, so we're going to make you a star. I don't know if he wants star. that, any, any you, <laughs> Anybody watching out there that wants to sign Adam Wissett, <laughs> he's available. That's right. right. He is available. He's and absolutely I'm, available. And I'm free to produce his records. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and our producer, Mark Zalatimo, is here. So, well, you know, one of the things, Gary, that I want to mention is that when we're at the store, we have customers come in a lot, and this is the, th this is the most common thing that we hear, is it's guitar players or bass players or keyboard players who are looking for ways to create drum tracks around their music, and they're looking for the magic box mm -hmm. that's going to do it for them. But there really isn't a magic box. It's now a piece of software. Right, And, right. you know, this is, I can't stress enough, if you're afraid of the technology, stop being afraid of it. Buy it and just get into it. And if you get it from us at the store, we're always willing to help people learn the application for free, do it. anytime. Well, well, I have a question. How, sure. how did you get that drum track in there? Did you use the, the, yeah, I can show you. Um, a MIDI controller or, or just tap it in? Or we, I used a loop that was already existing that we oh, okay. modified slightly. But, you but you, there are MIDI controllers like this which have no sounds built into them at all. They just take the sounds from reason. They take the Correct. sounds out of reason. And input them. And this is like a glorified mouse is what it is. Okay. So but you can tap on it. You can you tap can on it. You can play it. Yeah, you've got a full octave or a that's, little better. That's right. Two octaves. And they make these in yeah. all different sizes. This is a 25 key. They make 49, 61, 76, 88 keys. You can use a full blown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Full keyboard if you want. Right. Okay. So, so that's how you get input in. That's right. And that instrument can virtually be dozens, more than dozens of instruments. Right. Right. It can be anything. Yeah, exactly. It's whatever sound you it have. It can be car crashes. It can be, you know, explosions. It can be whatever you want it to That's be. That's excellent. That's great. So it it works. So the the bottom line for musicians mm -hmm. is that we now don't have to spend a quarter of a million or a half a million dollars on a studio. That's you can right. go in there and for a couple of grand set yourself up. Right. And you're you're in business. You're in business. You're and in Listening to this, it's pretty darn good quality. Yeah. Well, it's digital yeah, quality. It's, digital. it's great quality. Okay, now what, what if I want a CD of this? What do we do? Well, basically, you know, anytime you buy a CD or listen to a tape or whatever medium it might be, it's a stereo track, right? It's right. left and right. Right. So we need to mix this down to a stereo track, which is really simple to do. Simple to do on this software? Yeah, yeah, really okay. easy to do. So okay. you just basically create a stereo track right. and you bus all the other tracks to that track and you record it out. And once the song plays through one time in real time, mm -hmm. you have your stereo track. You can then take that WAV file and burn any CD you want as long as you change the bit depth from 24-bit, because we're in 24-bit here, right. to down to 16-bit. Which is the standard for That's a common CD. CD. All, all CDs are 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz. So okay. it's a really simple process. Cool. So, and, you know, so basically, it'll burn off your computer if you have a burner, or you can hook up a, a separate little CD burner yeah, correct. and use it. You can hook up a CD burner directly off your audio interface. And right. You can play it and then in real time record it onto your CD burner cool. as well. Well, we only have a couple minutes left, so is there anything else you'd like to tell us? And uh, Just the thing I've always said, and I'll keep saying it again, is that I really encourage songwriters to come to the store and check these products out because it's really going to expand their songwriting and be extremely satisfying for them right. uh, you know, in the process of writing songs. So it, it truly does work. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic stuff. Because this was snake oil years ago. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. we talked about it. Right. And when we went to do it, it didn't work. Right, exactly. Now it works. It's very fluid. I know. I walked into the, to the Pro Audio Department at Showcase, and I saw you guys doing this. And yeah. I go, what is this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you go, no, we're, that's okay. We're making a song. We were you know, making we're, a song, and yeah, it, was, yeah. it was fun and you easy to do. You were actually producing a song, yeah. and, and, it was, and, and it's high quality. Absolutely. You know, and, and which, is, which is very cool. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, so... I mean that's kind of that's 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 amazing to me that we can do this and it, and it doesn't take a lot. In fact, if somebody already has a couple of little monitors and they already right. have their computer, they've just got to buy some software. That's right. Some way to input it. If they already have a keyboard, all keyboards have a MIDI interface. Right. Exactly. So they're yeah. all any keyboard can be used like keyboard. the one we they just have showed. They have a little exactly. Casio or yep. Yamaha at home that's or right. whatever. Yep. Okay. All that's that's all you need to get started. Very cool. I think the important yeah. thing to remember is you know the equipment isn't what makes the song. You know it's. The people still make the song. The that's heart. Right. Yeah, it's the heart. Absolutely. People still make the song. All they do is help you put it somewhere. Right. That's right. And and so now we have the tools to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Well, thank you guys. You know, we're we're about to let's let's right. listen to this music okay, as we great. go. Yeah. And uh, let's. That's a great song. Thank you. I, I think yeah. Thank you. You're you're a good songwriter yeah, and please. you're a good producer. Thank you very much. Let's, let's hear this song again. Okay. Last and, time. Uh, I like it. Now, and I don't 
I beat my head against the wall And I try and think what 